Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 186, Dropping a Visit Su Ming Feng left staggeringly. When he left, he seemed to have experienced a tremendous change that his soul was somewhat lost. Shen Miao initially wanted to say a few words to Zi Jing Xing but Zi Jing Xing had returned to his indifferent appearance and smiled as he urged her to return to the residence to rest unwilling to mention about the matter. Shin Miao was helpless and could only go along with what he wanted to do. Some people like to share their painful experiences to win the sympathy of others. However one would not be willing to share with others the thing that made one really upset as every time when one remembered about it, it would be stabbing oneself with a knife. For Zi Jing Xing type of person, most likely he was not willing to reveal his weaknesses to others so in the eyes of others. He was very strong and nothing was impossible for him. However Shen Miao heard something from his words. The most important point is that there is no nurturing but only expungement from Ming Chi to me. Even upon returning to the Shen mansion, Shen Miao was still thinking about this matter. What was the meaning that there was only expungement from Ming Chi to Zi Jing Xing? What floated in Shen Miao's mind was the events of the last lifetime. In the last lifetime the residence of the Marquis of Linen still fell at the end. Zi Ding and Zi Jing Xing both died in the battlefield and the remaining brothers. Zi Chang Zhao and Zi Chang Wu were promoted as officials and Madame Feng also rose as a result. How in this lifetime, even though the three sons of the Zi family were gone, Zi Ding was still alive. As long as Zi Ding was still there, the residence of the Marquis of Linen was not considered fallen. If Zi Ding had the intention to remarry, there was a possibility to have another son at this age. Even though it would look rather miserable, but comparing to the previous lifetime, it was already much better. The difference between the last lifetime and the current one seemed to have started two years ago. In the previous lifetime, Zi Jing Xing did not set off to Northern Zhang but only did so in a few years time and with time being shifted earlier, it had led to some changes. Just what exactly caused Zi Jing Xing to make this decision? Because of her, Xin Miao was deep in thoughts. But what did Ming Qi do to push it? In the last lifetime when Shen Miao knew of the Zi family's matter, she would sigh. She had initially suspected if the imperial family was involved in the matter but did not delve deeper into matters, be it be relations or reasonings, other than the father and son of the Zi family being a scoundrels. They were nothing but loyal to Ming Chi. If it was just because of being wary of their meritorious achievements that they were obliterated, then the imperial family was just too ruthless and unfeeling. At this moment, a conjecture appeared in her mind. Assuming the imperial family had already pointed the head of the arrow towards the residence of the Marquis of Linen, then the death of the father and son of the Z family in the battlefield would be the ending that the imperial family planned for the residence of the Marquis of Linen. Then because Zi Jing Xing took the initiative to request for the expedition in advance, the imperial family's plans were brought forward. The imperial family had its wish fulfilled and made Zi Jing Xing die in the battlefield but at this time Zi Ding was still alive. Not only that, Zi Ding still had two sons but the ambitions of the residents of the Marquis of Lin and that imperial family felt had not yet disappear. Fortunately Zi Ding was unable to recover after Zi Jing Xing's death and thus there was no rush to carry out the plan. Two years later, the Shu sons of the Zi family die in an accident and since then Zi Ding had no possibility of changing his fortune, thus even if he was remained there would not be any problems. The imperial family then changed their previous plans and even took the initiative to placate, to show kindness and compassion to the officials. If one said that Zi Jing Xing had anticipated everything that happened in the future, then the decision to go for the expedition two years ago was not a rash action. Just like what he told Su Ming Feng, it was the only way to protect the residents of the Marquis of Linen. However all these were Shen Miao's thoughts and no one would know what the truth was. As she was thinking about it, she felt that it was better to find an opportunity to ask Zi Jing Xing about it. In the past life she did not delve deep into it but in this lifetime, she was just too curious about it. On this night, Shen Miao kept on thinking carefully over it, 
Su Ming Feng endured the suffering and naturally there were still others that had no mood to sleep. In the residence of Prince Ding, it was brightly lit the entire night. Fu Ziyu Yi sat on the highest position and looked at the subordinate that came to report before slowly asking, Su Ming Feng went to the residence of Prince Rui. The subordinate said, exactly so. After exiting, the heir of the Count of Pingnan seemed to have suffered an provocation and had a preoccupied appearance. Fu Ziyu Yi waved his hands and the subordinate withdraw. The aide by his side came up to ask, for the heir of the Count of Pingnan to go to the residence of Prince Rui in the middle of the night. Could it be that there are some secret relations with Prince Rui? The residence of the Count of Pingnan is no longer in the official dim circle so even if Prince Rui wanted to find someone to cooperate with, he would not look for him. Fu Ziyu Yi's gaze turned cold, the Su family was originally a very good chess piece and if it was not at Su Ming Feng who suddenly became seriously ill and the Su family gradually withdrew from officialdom, one would not be at this step. However. He continued, it is really fortunate for the Su family to escape from misfortune. The aide said, speaking of which, initially when the heir of the Count of Ping Nan was sick, it was really very strange. Because the heir of the Count of Ping Nan was sick, the Count resigned from his post and gradually retired that there was almost no news from them in Ding capital. Fu Ziyu Yi laughed. Could it be that you really thought that Su Ming Feng was really sick? May your highness enlighten this one. Su Ming Feng and Zi Jing Xing, of the residence of the Marquis of Linen, are best friends. Fu Ziyu Yi said, It is indeed strange that the Su family would suddenly withdraw from officialdom, especially Su Ming Feng. At that time it was when he was flourishing but suddenly he got seriously sick and no longer strove and directly resigned. It was said that he would not live past a few years but see, two years had passed and Su Ming Feng is living well in the residence of the Count of Ping Nan. This is obviously that he had wisened up for the sake of personal survival and quickly retreated like rapids. Naturally there was someone who reminded them. The residence of the Count of Ping Nan and the residence of the Marquis of Linen always had good relations. Other than having one's good friend reminding, other people would most likely be unwilling to meddle with others' business. But, the aide unconvincing asked, there is still the Marquis of Linen, Zi Ding, in the residence of the Marquis of Linen. So why the one that warned them is Zi Jing Xing and not Zi Ding? It is difficult for Zi Ding to save himself. Fu Ziyu Yi took a sip of tea. Zi Ding is proud and arrogant and would often be impudent in front of Imperial Father due to the military power he held. Imperial Father had long had the intention to remove it. If Zi Ding was a little smarter, he would have exercised restraint but take a look. Has he ever exercised restraint in Ding capital? It is Zi Jing Xing that one cannot underestimate. Fu Ziyu Yi said as he squinted his eyes. Didn't Zi Jing Xing also acted arrogantly and unbridled? The aide said, when anyone in Ding Capital mentioned about Zi Jing Xing, everyone would know that he was a stubborn and daring person. Yes but don't forget one point. Fu Ziyu Yi replied, from the beginning, he did not enter officialdom. Everyone said that it was because of Zi Ding that Zi Jing Xing did not enter officialdom and deliberately delayed his purpose in life but I did not think so. During the Chrysanthemum Banquet, when Zi Jing Xing dealt with his two Shu younger brothers, he had exhibited martial arts skills that mad one admire from the heart. He is a worldly talent but was not willing to display it. What is this called? This is concealing oneself. How many years Zi Ding have lived? And how many years Zi Jing Xing live? Zi Ding had lived for so many years but was still blinded by the residence of the Marquis of Linen's riches and glory. But even though Zi Jing Xing was at such a young age, he was able to judge and size up the situation. Zi Jing Xing is the scariest person in the residence of the Marquis of Linen. So the person who warned the Su family was not Zi Ding but Zi Jing Xing and only Zi Jing Xing. The aide looked towards Fu Ziyu Yi. Is your highness viewing Zi Jing Xing too highly? Even if Zi Jing Xing reminded the Su family, it cannot prove anything. What cannot be proven? Fu Ziyu Yi looked at him and asked. How about adding the Z family army? Z family army? The aide was puzzled and immediately thought of something before looking at Fu Ziyu Yi in shock, your highness means. In short, 
The scariest in the residence of the Marquis of Linen is not Zi Ding but Zi Jing Xing. Fu Ziyu Yi said, when this person is young of age, he already had the ambition and brains so if he was given power, the Ding capital would only be up in chaos. With him around, one would not be able to swallow down the residence of the Marquis of Linen. Fortunately Zi Jing Xing is already dead. After the aide heard Fu Zhu Yi's words, he sighed in relief. The current residence of the Marquis of Linen can no longer make any waves, correct? Fu Zhu Yi said, towards a dangerous enemy, one must always kill when it had not fully grown up. But he changed the topic. I am now curious as to why did Su Ming Feng mix with Prince Ruai? Not only that. The aide continued his words, Princess Rong Xin seemed to be investigating Prince Ruai. Su Ming Feng's people were also monitoring the Shen mansion, seemingly monitoring the every movement of the fifth Shen young lady. Princess Rong Xin is also like so. Su Ming Feng, Prince Ruai, Princess Rong Xin and Shen Miao. Fu Zayu Yi said, there must be some special relationship between these people, especially between Shen Miao and Prince Ruai now that they were bestowed marriage by Imperial Father. I am understands Imperial Father's temperament very clearly and he is one that would not hand things that one have claims over. The Shen family is already an object in Imperial Father's back and Imperial Father will not give this advantage to outsiders so how would one bestow her to Prince Ruai to be a prince consort unfathomably? From this view, this is an uneconomical transaction for Ming Chi. Your Highness means. The aide muttered to himself irresolutely. This marriage is requested on the initiative of the side of Prince Ruai. Not only that, Prince Ruai must have used some method to force Imperial Father to make this decision. Fu Zayu Yi suddenly smiled strangely. Don't you find it strange? Previously I suspected that there was an unusual relationship between Prince Ruai and Shen Miao but felt that Prince Ruai is not one who would change the world plans for a female. However from the current situation it seemed that I am wrong as Prince Ruai have real feelings for Shen Miao. Thus he would rack his brains to obtain an imperial decree. In this world there is no matter that will happen without reason. Su Ming Feng and Princess Rong Xing had never left Ding capital for an entire life so it is not possible for them to know Prince Ruai, however their attitude towards Prince Ruai seemed to be as if they were familiar with him. Moreover Prince Ruai and Shen Miao only encountered a few times so how would he take such a step for her? Could it be that Prince Ruai had come to Ming Chi before? The aide was shocked. Your Highness mean that Prince Ruai previously came to Ding Capital and met them and had some relationship with them. It is naturally not possible to come over brazenly. Fu Zayu Yi smiled, perhaps we have been deceived from the beginning or that Prince Ruai had been living in Ding Capital as a citizen of Ming Chi from the beginning. Otherwise why would he need to wear a mask? One heard that everyone in the Imperial family of Great Liang was shockingly beautiful so why does Prince Ruai not dare to show his true face? I think that he has a face that we will definitely recognize. The aide was silent as if this news had shocked him so much that he could not say a single word. Fu Zayu Yi smiled, but all these are just my own guesses and it is not accurate now. It is alright as I have sent people to continue monitoring. It is just that now one looked forward even more to Prince Ruai's secret. He paused for a while before suddenly remembering and asked, How is Pei Lang doing? The aide was startled and recalled for a bit still refuses to loosen his mouth. Fu Zayu Yi smiled, continue, just don't let him die. He then said, the people that the Shen family found all have really hard bones. One really envious. The aide heard it and his entire body felt a chill but he dared not say anything and only respectfully withdraw. The Shen family finally accepted the fact that Shen Miao would be marrying to Prince Ruai and since the marriage had been settled, the request of marriage was sent and the list of betrothal gifts had been prepared so the female side had to show their attention to this marriage. Even though Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan did not agree for Shen Miao to marry Prince Ruai, if they did not prepare well, other people would feel that they did not value Shen Miao. Even with his last breath, 
Shen Xin would not be willing to let others look down at his daughter. It was just that the list of betrothal gifts that Prince Ruai had sent over was just too shocking that preparing the dowry had become a problem. Originally Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan both had military lineage and due to the military merits in the early years, they had received many rewards. Both of them were not in Ding capital for most of the year thus other than the portion that was given to old Shen Furin and the public fun. They did not touch the rest. There were only two children in the residence and Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan was not biased to any, dividing everything to half. This was in fact considered very broad-minded. However in the two years in Zhao Chun city, they had invested a lot of money into the Lu family army and thus the Shen family's wealth was not as substantial as before. But everything was blamed on the list of betrothal gifts that Prince Ruai sent. Even when the Shen family was in their heyday, it would also be difficult to carry it on their backs. Previously Shen Kaiyu still felt that Prince Ruai was bragging as this list of betrothal gifts was enough to marry ten high-ranking noble family's daughters. It might be that Prince Ruai was joking with the Shen family but on the second day, Tai Yi moved to chest of gold geese by the orders of Prince Ruai, almost scaring Shen Kaiyu to stumble. That was something that even the Empress Dowager would treasure but Prince Ruai gifted as a good omen and just place it in a random box to send it over. After that, everyone believed that Great Liang was really rich and Prince Ruai was really squandering money like dirt. This list of betrothal gifts was not a joke and Shen Miao's dowry had become a big problem. Shen Kaiyu took the initiative to give Shen Miao his portion of the money, that was left to him to marry a wife, and said, one cannot be short-sighted. How could one let younger sister's dowry be lesser than half of what Prince Ruai's list of betrothal gifts? If one reached Great Liang, others would look down. Our Shen family's young lady is the best and Prince Ruai gifting such betrothal gifts, whereas our dowry is so little, one does not know if he would look down. One cannot be muddle-headed. The very most one can pawn the antiques in my room. Even though we are poor, we cannot lose face. Shen Zin seemed to be taking it into consideration. Shen Miao. The Shen family was in any case considered one of the richest family in Ding capital but why from Shen Kaiyu's mouth, it seemed that it was very improvised and one had to pawn the things in the house to make up the dowry. One did not fear that others would laugh their heads off upon hearing it. Because it was the end of the year. The big and small matters in Ding capital was much more relaxed and Shen Miao's marriage was bestowed by Emperor Wen Hua. Perhaps Emperor Wen Hua knew that the Shen family had a lot of dissatisfaction about the marriage in their hearts. He specially gave Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan a period of leave so that they could accompany Shen Miao and only return after Shen Miao's marriage was completed. Naturally Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan were happy as their minds were all focused on Shen Miao even without the emperor's approved leave. Shen Kaiyu and Lu Ling were in the army and upon reaching the end of the year, there would not be much work thus these days they were in the residence helping Lu Zhu Yan on New Year's stuff or helping Shen Miao around. The entire family was in the hall chatting leisurely, with the freshly made snacks by the chef and the charcoal burning brightly. Lu Tan smiled towards Shen Miao, youngest Biao sister, once the year is over, you will be married off. Even though it is not possible to embroider one's wedding dress now, you still have to prepare something for yourself. You should get the embroidery maidens over to quickly measure and speed up the process to finish the dress. When the females in Ming Chi were to be married, they would embroider their wedding dress. Generally when the engagement was done early, they would start to embroider a few years ahead. Those who settled their engagement later would instruct the tailor to make a wedding dress before stitching a few patterns on it, to symbolize that it was personally done, like that. There would signify harmonious intention. The Shen family originally was not anxious about Shen Miao's marriage as they wanted to start looking for suitable young talents after the year was over and at that time it was just suitable for Shen Miao to start embroidering her wedding dress. Who knew that Emperor Wen Hua would hand out an imperial decree and it disrupted everything. It was impossible for Shen Miao to personally embroider a wedding dress thus nothing could be done. Lu Zhu Yin smack her head and said worriedly, I have almost forgotten about this matter these days. Tanner is right, 
Zhao Zhao's wedding dress have to be prepared. I am not familiar with Ding Capital's embroidery maiden so later I will ask those closer Furins where the best clothes and jewelry can be bought. Zhao Zhao's wedding dress cannot be done sloppily. After finish speaking she looked at Shen Miao and smiled. Zhao Zhao's stature is slip and would look good in a wedding dress. When Shen Miao heard about it, what appeared in her mind was that day when Xi Jingxing pulled her into his embrace and the sentence that he said after hugging one would know. She could not help but felt that her face was a bit hot. Shen Kaiyu asked, younger sister, why is your face so red? Should a physician be called over to take a look? Lu Ling's gaze flashed but he kept his head down and did not speak a single word. Lu Tan was smiling and spoke to Lu Zhu Yan on what kind of patterns to be embroidered on the wedding dress to make it festive and saw a servant running in from outside. Furen, master, there is someone at the door requesting for a visit. Didn't one already said that these days guests are not welcome? Aren't the main doors closed? Shen Zin said unpleased, why did you not refuse? He wanted to enjoy a few days of peace left and thus rejected everyone as he did not want to see everyone who come to Shen Mansion. The servant was almost in tears, it's, it's his highness Prince Ruai of Great Liang. Lu Tan's eyes widen and Shen Kaiyu stood up instantly and asked murderously, what is he here for? The servant said, this lowly one did not ask. Before the last word fell, one heard a low pitch voice that sounded from behind the servant to gift a wedding dress. Behind the servant, a tall and straight figure emerged. The servants in the Shen mansion might not be eye-catching but each one of them were considered proper and upright and after following Shen Kaiyu for so long, they also had some traces of heroism. However as compared to the person behind, it was like there was some dirt on their faces. The purple gold robes were swaying as his smile had some traces of laziness but it did not repulse others and seemed to be somewhat cynical. However the silver mask gave out a slight cold which made him look somewhat deep and unpredictable. Even if one was unable to see his appearance, the outline of his face was good to look at. In particular when one walked leisurely over, elegantly and nobleness made one unable to turn their eyes away from the strong light. He said, Prince Ruai, even the person reporting their name was so arrogant and impudent. Shen Kaiyu almost pulled out his sword. He slammed his hand onto the table and the plates on the table that had snacks shook. He asked, you are Prince Ruai? Prince Ruai nodded his head. Why are you marrying my younger sister? What conspiracy are you plotting? Shen Kaiyu shouted. Lu Tan's jaw almost fell out. Shen Kaiyu's hostility towards Prince Ruai was just too great. Even though everyone had such thought in their hearts, it was too rude to directly ask someone about it. Zhao Zhao is gentle, sensible, dignified and generous. I have been admiring greatly, thus, requested the marriage earnestly. Fortunately, the emperor is broad-minded and was not insulted. He slowly said with a smile. Shen Miao could not help be shiver. She was really not used to hearing Zi Jingxing using such a gentle tone to speak. One had known that at the beginning when they were not familiar, every time Zi Jingxing see her, it was all sounding her out, treating her indifferently and ridiculing. Shen Xin and Shen Kaiyu suddenly became furious. Prince Ru Ai's remarks was praising Shen Miao on the surface but also said that he had admired Shen Miao and the more he said the worse it became. What did it mean that the emperor was broad-minded and was not insulted? Other people might not know but they knew it clearly that it was obviously Prince Ru Ai that forced Emperor Wen Hua to pass the imperial decree. The broad-minded of the emperor was forced and not being insulted who was not being insulted. Shen Kaiyu and Shen Xin were like two cannons and there was only a shortage of a spark before they blew up. This Prince Ruai had done all the bad things and for what reason did he come over to wag his wolf's tail? However Lu Zhu Yan's gaze soften. How a female view a male and how a male view another male were different. When a female view a male, one would look at the details. Prince Ruai did not use this prince but use I. When referring to Shen Miao, he did not use 5th Shen young lady but instead used Zhao Zhao. If it was just for the military power of the Shen family, Prince Ruai had already achieved his goal and this was not necessary. Regardless of whether this moment was sincere or an act, it was very good that he was willing to spend the effort to it. For instance with Fu Zhao Yi, 
When Shen Miao was initially admired Fu Ziyu Yi, at one end Fu Ziyu Yi made Shen Miao sway but he did not stay away or reject but also did not accept and was not willing to spend effort to please. Thus the Shen family was not willing to let Shen Miao be together with Fu Ziyu Yi. Not only because Fu Ziyu Yi's identity would pull the Shen family into the water, it was because Fu Ziyu Yi did not love Shen Miao at all. If one love another, one would be willing to put in effort for her. If one was not willing to spend a little effort then what would be expected for the future? As Lu Zhu Yin sized Prince Rui up, she saw that Prince Rui was willing to spend effort and it was already much better than she had though. What more was if one were to compare about appearance and temperament? It was difficult for Prince Rui to give others a bad feeling, compared Fu Ziyu Yi's breezy attitude and air of a prince of being sleek, smooth and evasive. Prince Rui was lazy and unbridled but one could see the true nature. For such true nature to be present from an imperial family, it was even more valuable. Lu Zhu Yan hoped that the husband that Shen Miao married to, would not put a false face when interacting with Shen Miao. She said, Your Highness Prince Rui, my name is Yuan and the style name is Jing Xing. Prince Rui said, Furen can call me Jing Xing. Shen Miao almost choke on the tea. Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat surprised as the people in the imperial family were most particular with regulations. Even between blood brothers, one would often pay attention to this and that. For people in Great Liang to be in Mingqi, it was considered to be very noble guests. Moreover Prince Ru I was the blooded younger brother of Emperor Yongla. One did not expect that he would let others call him by his styled name. Only when one's relationship was extremely close, could one let others call their styled name. Lu Zhu Yan's gaze of Prince Ru I soften even more as she said, Jing Xing, sit down first. He then instructed Jing's, serve the tea. Shen Kaiyu and Shen Xin immediately looked at Lu Zhu Yan in shock. They did not expect Lu Zhu Yan to treat this Prince Rui this good in such a short time. When Lu Ling saw it at the side, he looked at him with some attention. Jing Xing. Lu Tan suddenly said, is this not the name of Ding Capital's residence of the Marquis of Linen's heir? Shen Miao was holding the teacup but her heart was somewhat weak. Zi Jing Xing's daringness could cover the entire heavens. He actually dared to say his little name here. Was it he had felt that since Su Ming Feng and Princess Rong Xing had already known his true identity? There was no issues having a few more people know about it. Moreover anything related to his identity would lead to another's suspicions and not only Zi Jing Xing did not avoid it, the still bring it up outrightly. Even if one was drinking tea, Shen Miao felt that she was getting drunk. Shen Kaiyu felt indignant in his heart and seeing that Lu Zhu Yan letting Prince Rui sit down and instructed the servants to serve tea, he became unhappy and said after listening to Lu Tan's words, Correct. Prince Rui must not know who the heir of the residence of the Marquis of Linen is right? Prince Rui turned his head to look at him. Oh, who is that person? He is also called Zi Jing Xing and is the eldest Di son of the residence of the Marquis of Linen. Everyone say Southern Zi, Northern Shen, their Zi family are like our Shen family. Ming Qi's military lineage aristocratic families. Zi Jing Xing is the Zi family's little marquee and he is a rarely seen young talent. Just one person and with a single stroke, he was able to flip over countless of people and one did not even mention about his civil and military skills. He also have a handsome and flawless face. He is considered a young talent that all of Ming Qi respected and one would exclaim good when hearing of him. Shen Kaiyu sighed. Unfortunately Heavens is jealous of heroic geniuses. He fell early on in the battlefield in Northern Zhang. He changed the topic of conversation and looked at Prince Rui provocatively. One do not know what is your highness Prince Rui's feeling about this person of the same name? Comparing to that person with both matchless military and civil abilities, what are your chances of winning? Shen Miao was unable to speak, hearing Vice Marshal Shen's words. It seemed that one admires this little Z marquee? Prince Rui slowly asked. That is of course. Shen Kaiyu said it so vehemently and ignored Lu Zhu Yan's eye signals but saw Shen Zin's encouraging gaze and continued, He is the hero in my heart that no one can replace. Shen Miao supported her forehead. If possible, 
she really wanted to pretend that she did not know Shen Kaiyu. Looking at Zijing Xing, he must be feeling extremely rejuvenated.